Hi drivers, this is Paul Taylor once again from Truckers Justice Center. I'm one of the attorneys here and the founder of the law firm. So we are a firm that represents truck drivers. So I get a lot of drivers who call me and they say, I've got a great case for you. And I'll basically say in a little sarcastic way sometimes, try me. Let's talk about it. Because not everything is actionable that drivers think it is. Okay, actionable meaning that it's something you can sue over. I had a driver call me a couple weeks ago and said he was abandoned. And he said, there's a federal law that says a trucking company has to get you home if they fire you outside the truck. I searched high and low and I haven't seen it, but he insisted there was a federal law. Of course, he wasn't going to give me any of those phony stories that he's going to call the U.S. Marshal and they'll insist to order the trucking company to give somebody a ride home. But let's talk about what makes for a good case. Well, first of all, a good case is found where there's liability under the law, where a judge is going to look at this and say, yes, this person was wronged by this trucking company, and, and this applies to any type of case. This person was wronged. It's something you can sue over. And there's strong evidence. So that's element number one is if you have a good case. Is there likely to be liability found by a judge or by a jury? Depending on whether you're able to pick a judge or a jury. So is there evidence? What do you have? Do you have text messages saying... You rotten son of a bitch, drive that truck. I don't care how many bald tires, air leaks, and, and that you're past hours and you're 40,000 40, pounds over the legal weight limit. Drive it or we're going to fire you. Now that's a case. That's definitely a good liability case. But usually you don't have that kind of evidence. But you have evidence such as it's close in time. You refuse to break hours of service today you get fired four hours later. That's sort of a principle that we taught and learned about in law school called res ipsa loquitur. It's a uh, Latin phrase which means the matter speaks for itself. The analogy that the, the law professors used to use with us is if you go to bed and there's no snow on the ground and you wake up the next morning and there's snow on the ground, you can assume or infer that it snowed overnight. So the first element of really and that we take when we assess whether or not we're going to take a case or not, whether it's a good case, is there evidence of liability? Timing, motive to retaliate, say for a driver who refuses to break DOT regulations, are they documented by texts, by emails, by DVIRs? by things of that nature. What, how strong is the evidence here? Two, and most essential for a good case is, what kind of damages are there? Now, if you have a case where you're fired, say you're fired because you won't break hours of service, or let's say the carrier broke the DOT leasing laws and cheated you out of $20, you may have a case that's good from the standpoint of liability but not any good for damages. You know, a lot of the cases we do, there's laws that say we get to recover our attorney's fees if we win. So you would think we wouldn't care if somebody only had $10 of damages and we would sue over it. That isn't so because people who are out $10 or $100 or even $1,000 tend not to be invested in their own case. And we don't want carriers who, uh, excuse me, drivers who aren't going to spend time working with us, helping to do discovery, showing up for trial, preparing. We don't want people who are going to disappear. So when we take a case, we want to make sure that not only is there a good case for liability, in other words, are we likely to win in some form, but two, are there enough damages to justify us taking it and you taking it for money? I have lots of clients who say, I, I'll say, well, you got to, you know, you got illegally fired. You got fired because you wouldn't drive without working windshield wipers and a, and a hub seal leak. Or you got fired because you wouldn't break hours of service and you're out of work three days and then you got a job that pays you more. And I have, a, I've had clients, I'd say that just does, can't justify taking the case over that little bit of money. 
And the clients will say, I don't care about the money. Well, that's hogwash. Lawsuits are about money because that's just about the only thing that a judge can give you under most lawsuits. Now, we have cases uh, that we do employment law cases for drivers where they might be ordered, a carrier can be ordered to give the job back, but lawsuits are about money. If you want to have a carrier suffer so they won't retaliate against another driver again for refusing to break a DOT regulation or a carrier to suffer uh, because they've skimmed money off from a driver, well, that isn't a good motive. What carriers understand and how they operate, and like any other employer, they operate on a profit motive. And when you hurt them in the pocketbook, that sometimes causes them to change their practices just a little bit or sometimes a lot. So one, when we evaluate a case, and you're talking to us and, we say, do, and you say, do I have a good case? One, is there likely to be liability? Do we have proof of that? At least some level of proof, or we're are we likely to be able to get that proof? Two, are there damages worth pursuing in your case? You know, pursuing a case, and I've done it. I had a case that went to trial, and uh, in two appeals, and the attorney or the the driver was out nine hundred bucks, and our fees were seventy thousand dollars. When I build half of what I build now, that may sound outrageous, but the driver was made whole. But today, now twenty years later. I'm looking at, when I'm taking a case, I really have to evaluate, is the driver going to be invested in this? In other words, is he looking to be able to get a reasonable amount of money? If he's not financially invested in it, you know, in terms of his time, because he's looking to get a recovery if we win or settle, that's probably something we're not interested. Thirdly, so, excuse me, first you got, is there li likely to be liability found in favor of the driver and against the carrier? Two, is there a, an adequate amount of damages, a damages pool there, so to speak? Have you been injured enough sufficient for you to justify your investment as a, one of our clients or for us to be invested? Third and most important, is there the ability to recover in the event you win? Now, I will tell you from my experience, I used to be a bill collection lawyer for trucking companies. I did other things for them during the first eight or nine years of my career. Uh, and now I'm an employment lawyer for drivers and have been doing that since 1996. Primarily, that's about 90% of what I do and I've done it for a long time. But when you're looking at recovery, I will tell you this, it is a lot easier to win a case than it is to collect. So do you have a case? Let's talk about who the carrier is. One of the first things we do is we go to the FMCSA's database when we're suing a carrier or thinking of suing a carrier, excuse me. You've got your case, you've talked to us, to us about it. You know, I'll say, hold on, let me start typing on the computer or one of my assistants. I got one here to my right and one operating the camera here. Say, look up this carrier, you know, Joe's trucking out of uh, Detroit, Michigan. And we look up and we say, well, Joe's got two trucks and he's got an out of service rate of 75%. Joe isn't going to be around very long. We're not going to pursue Joe. We want to make sure that if we sue somebody, we can recover the amount of money. We tend to avoid the all owner operator companies, small companies, or companies with high out of service rates. So that, that really is kind of the preliminary thing we, things we look through when we're screening a case, if you call us. One, how is the liability good? Not just based on what you say, but also on what kind of documentation you have. Two, is it likely to bring money if there's a win? In other words, would we, do we have enough damages to justify or potential damages to justify taking the case? And three, if we win, are we going to be able to collect? So you're always free to call us with a, a potential employment or lease related case if you're an owner operator and we're happy to chat with you. I usually return most calls within 24 hours. Uh, so don't let this necessarily deter you but it's something to keep in mind when you call us. First thing I'm gonna ask you is what's the name of the carrier? How big are they? What proof do you got? What happened? How long have you been out of work? Have you been fired? Or if you, you know, you're back to work, how much less are you making? So thanks for watching and we look forward to posting more of these videos. Take care, have a good day.